It's clear from our earliest Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that Jesus' disciples did not consider him to be God while he was alive. It's also clear from later writings that after they came to believe in his resurrection, they did believe he was God in some sense. They didn't think he was God the Father, but in some sense he's God. This is hard for us to conceptualize in the modern world, but in the ancient world it makes perfect sense. In the ancient world, we know of a number of human beings who are said at the end of their lives to be taken up to heaven. This is in Greek and Roman mythology. It's actually in Jewish circles. It's also in the New Testament. Jesus is taken up to heaven. When somebody is taken up to heaven, they dwell in the heavenly realm and they're made a divine being. The early Christians who believed Jesus was taken up to heaven believed he was a divine being that God had made him divine. Over time, as they began thinking more and more about it, they thought, well, he must not have been made God just when he, after he died. He must have been God during his, his ministry because of all those miracles. And so then they started thinking, well, when he was baptized, God made him divine. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And as they thought about it more, they thought, well, it wasn't just during his ministry. It's during his life. And so uh, when he was born of a virgin, in two of, our, our, two of our later Gospels, he's born of a virgin because God is literally his father. His mother's a virgin. So he's the son of God from his birth. As they thought about it more, it isn't just during his birth. It's, he must have always been God. And so already in the New Testament, you have the idea that Jesus is a divine being before he comes into the world. As time goes on, Christians think more and more about this. When you start moving into the later centuries, into the third, the fourth century, there are theologians with deep philosophical training who come to believe that, in fact, Christ is not simply a divine being next to God the Father. There's only one God. Christ and the Father are one. It's not that they're the same, but they're equal. And this begins, then, the development of the doctrine of the Trinity that you start getting in the fourth and fifth Christian centuries.